Chief Guest of, of this today's evening, His Excellency Mr. Nasser Al Abdulaziz Al Nasser, High Representative of the United Nations for Global Civilization, former President of the 66th General Assembly of the United Nations, His Excellency Sheikh Abdurrahman bin Mohammed bin Jabir Al Thani, Managing Director of Doha Bank. Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, dear friends, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure and privilege for me to welcome you for an interesting and exciting content. As you could see clearly, economic integration for the borderless world. We live in a changing world. A world which is full of opportunities. Globalization, re-regulation, technology and consumerism is redefining the space. I was on television today morning, CNBC, with the changing face of the financial markets, commodity price. Today, Brent is quoting $47 and again, New Mexico, U.S. crude is $44, $45. It's an extraordinary turbulence in the financial markets. The anchor was asking me a few questions, perhaps, if I respond to those questions to you. That's the very concept I have revealed today. Everyone is worried about the changing face of the world. What has happened in the last three months has been compelling for us to see through how do we redefine this world to have global growth. It's all right, in 2008 we realized financial crisis was visibly shaking. It's not confined to Lehman Brothers or Bass Terms. It transcended borders, in fact, the world. Economists and bankers, politicians and policymakers have realized it is a liquidity issue. We thought by pumping money, improving the money supply, we can fix the issue. It was quantitative easing. Americans started. Trillions of dollars were pumped. Stock market was inflated. Hot money was transcending borders. World over, we were trying to pull the global growth from the collapse. Liquidity crisis moved into a funding crisis. Funding crisis has become a solvency issue and it has become a sovereign issue world over. Extraordinary sea of changes. G7 has become G8. G8 has become G20, first time in April 2009. Converging in economics and politics, they pronounce some of the initiatives which are responsible to make sure the world and the globe come to terms to have sustainable performance. After six years, still we are realizing sustainability is not visible. If phase one is all about liquidity, phase one is all about recognizing the, the challenges in terms of money supply from an asset price inflation when it went to housing market collapse, asset price deflation by pumping money we were trying to inflate the banking, trade, investment, finance, we're all getting redefined. Regulators have said, it's not our mistake. Systemic issues is, is to be recognized. And they said, we will re-regulate from deregulations. Conservative, cautious mechanism, measurement mechanism was set in. Extraordinary decisions were taken. It's not only in London, April 2009, than we had in Pittsburgh in 2000 same year in 2009 and thereafter series of meetings G20 has met as good as a couple of months ago before in Australia and Brisbane. Extraordinary decisions have been taken but looking at the current market reflection, looking at the global growth as on date, we are coming to terms that still the patient is in ICU. It's not by putting 
oxygen cylinders plugging the hole, you can fix and revive the patient. We need to converge not only in politics, not only in economics, we have to come to terms as humans. We have to realize this world is full of opportunities if we recognize this world is borderless. If we recognize it is genderless. If we recognize there is no caste. If we recognize there is no creed. If we recognize there is no religion, we all one dignity. Humanity is our greater prosperity. Then we are going to set an extraordinary vision for future generations to come. We have to eradicate extreme poverty. Serious challenges. As I did, we have we know we have 6.8 billion people in this planet Earth. It's going to be 9 billion by 2050. That is a food security. That is a food security. If you look at the econometrics, we have to have incremental production more than 70 percent given the current quantum. How are we going to generate? How are we going to make sure we recognize men and women are equal? Gender equality is a must for us to see through. Peace and prosperity comes in and happiness comes in within the family, within the enterprise, within the country, within the continent, within the world. How are we going to make sure child mortality is recognized as a structured issue in the global arena and we are going to map the risk and setting health care? How are we going to make sure universal education is a necessity that is real wealth, not the money power? Real wealth is education. How we realize knowledge society is setting the stone for the new world order. How are we going to ensure is knowledge is being supplemented as, as a prime tool for us to sustain this world. How we are recognizing the importance of global warming and climate change. Increasing weather conditions, rising temperature, rising sea levels, animal extinction, name it. Environment has become a major issue. We have to understand sustainable environment is the needle hub. We can achieve all this if we understand what's happening in, in today's world. Global economics is in tatters. It's a gambling ground to be precise. Advanced economies are still reeling under pressure. America is said to be recovering and making 5%. Last quarter was 5% was the GDP growth. Today, as we speak, I just saw the flash, World Bank is resetting the global growth for 2015 and 2016. We are out of prediction now. The reality is we take things as it comes. If you look at the emerging markets, we have compelling reasons to believe they are slowing down. America apart. They stop the bond buying programs. They want to inflate. They cannot inflate because oil price is going down. Unless they reach 2% inflation, they cannot, again, really believe the growth, what they have seen of late is sustainable. Of course, jobless claims are reducing. Housing market is recovering. Consumer price inflation needs to reach sufficient level for monetary policy to be ignited interest rates to be normal. Otherwise, it's only accommodative monetary policy. It's not real. Monetary policy and fiscal policy has to align to have sustainability in real order. Europe has got a different reflection today. Extraordinary situation for us. We are seeing after five years, Greece is, is getting into functional friction in politics. And large Europe has to come to terms to inflate and also make sure sustainability comes in. Monetary policy is centralized, fiscal policy is decentralized. Again, European growth is subject to a risk of deflation. Middle East. 45% of the world oil, 20-25% of the world gas. We thought oil price will sustain 100 plus. We can continue to have current account surplus, investable surplus. And again, sovereign funds world over, diversification as a structured solution. Look at, the, look at the downward trend in the oil market. It's not Americans who have pumped shale 
hydraulic fracturing in terms of gas and oil. It's a, it's a supply, demand of factors, plus the currency market is destabilizing the oil market. Many people have asked me this question, why oil is coasting down? It's a falling knife, how do you catch it? Iraq is supplying today 3.4 million barrels. We have clear symptoms that the excess supply is happening. Russians are supplying over 10.4 million barrels of, a day. OPEC is not cutting the output. Supply is excessive. There's no question. Demand is not at a pace at which it used to. Incremental consumption is not visible. China is redefining. Possibly yes, a marginal slowdown is visible. Emerging market is not consuming at the rate at which they are supposed to. Alternates have been looked at as an opportunity. Add to that the currency market, which is a gambling ground. When you print money, improve the money supply, the currency gets weakened. The reflection is what you're seeing today. Dollar gets strengthened because the American economy is supposed to be recovering in real order. Dollar index has gone 20% up last one year, 92.3 basis points as we speak. Japanese yen has been trailing and is weakening. You have Japanese yen, 117 yen for one dollar, and you have seen how British pound as well as euro has been marginalized. These currencies are weakening, while dollar was strengthening. It means it has reflection, currency market, currency war creates trade war. That's what the reflection we are seeing in real order. When you have dollar strengthen, you have commodity futures are out of equation. When dollar is weak, people hedge the risk by buying commodity futures. That's why oil price was going up up, up and up. When dollar gets strengthened, everyone unwind the positions in the process, you have petrodollars. Reflection is visible today. Currency also contributed for the oil price downturn. What does it mean to Qatar economy? I had the privilege of meeting the finance ministry yesterday. Please be rest assured. This country is, is full of substance and substantive compliance. We have sovereign funds. We have attempted diversification as a structured solutions. We have investable surplus. We have current account surplus. And irrespective of the turbulence we are seeing in the marketplace, in global, regional, local space, you will have comprehensive, moderate growth to sustain the credibility Qatar has set in as a responsible nation. That's what he mentioned to me. He reassured that as a banker, he could clearly see things which are visible. In essence, if you have to sustain the global growth, we have to come to terms. We have to reset this button in the planet Earth. We have to find ways and means of building global partnership and realignment in the currency market, in the trade, in the banking, in the finance. And that's what today is evolving to be the fine combination. China is now internationalizing Yuan. And then is is currency swap is visible wherever there is a trade linkage. We have seen reflection of various reorganizations taking place in the partnerships. These are all good. This new partnership is new opportunities. Let us look at it with a constructive view, engagement. The changes which are happening in the political side is good for bringing global prosperity. Changes which are happening in the economic space, including the re-regulation, is ethical and moral to make sure we create a generation which is sustainable. At the same time, we all have to contribute with one realization that we are one community, humanity, human dignity, human prosperity. We want to make sure when we leave this planet, our children and grandchildren are safe and sound. That's the very purpose of our existence. We create a better world for future generations. I'm sure all of us in this room are trying to adjust that. If that is the case, the solution reminds global citizenship, global partnership, convergence of globalization in real order. That is precisely the reason why we set this content. Who could be the right person to be the chief guest for this evening? That was my next question. Here is the son of the soil, whom I know for years. He has been associated with Doha Bank for many, many years. In 2004, when we had Qatar was showcased in New York in Hotel Palace, a badger 
was the United Nations permanent ambassador from Qatar and he was the chief guest showcasing the opportunities Qatar is going to enlighten for years to come, 10 years before. Subsequently in 2006, when he was chosen in the United Nations Security Council, I had the privilege of being part of the celebration along with then the, the Prime Minister, His Excellency Sheikh Ahmed bin Jassim in the Hotel Palace, perhaps you could re recollect. After that, I have to share a very interesting experience I've had when he was chosen as 66th President of the United Nations General Assembly, His Excellency Mr. Nasser Abdulaziz Al Nasser just called me and said, my responsibility starts from 13 September. My official installation is on 21st of September, 2011. I said, fine. I'll be there. I was there. He didn't tell me what he's going to do on the day. He called me for a coffee in the morning on September 21st. I had a privilege of accompanying him in a NYPD motorcade to the United Nations. This gentleman had a privilege. This is an extraordinary privilege for Qatar. You have to recognize this comes in rotation. 192 countries in the United Nations. It comes in rotations once in many, many years. You will have your working group where you belong to in, in geographic terms. Select one among your own geography, and he becomes, in a selective basis, in rotations, President of the United Nations. Qatar had the privilege, uh, this gentleman, His Excellency, had the privilege of chairing for one year as a President. And it is an extraordinary day. I saw the President of Brazil was invited, President Barack Obama was invited, and again, His Excellency, the, His Highness, Father Amir, the, the Amir then, was also was invited by His Excellency Mr. Nasser Abdul Aziz Al Nasser. I saw the witness and I was wondering what an extraordinary honor for Qatar and for a fine diplomat of par excellence. And I asked him, as good as last September when I was cutting through Washington and I, I popped in for a lunch with Ambassador Nasser, rather my friend Mr. Nasser. I ask him, what are you going to do with all this experience, extraordinary experience you had? You settle, you will be the party to the Dara Fora in Lebanon when you were in Security Council presidency, and now you have gone through extraordinary missions. Are you going to summarize in a book? He said, yes. I have already done the book, and the United Nations Secretary General has given the forward for this book. I said, let's have the privilege of showcasing it today. That is 14th of January 2015. You will release the book in front of all of our Qatari friends and His Excellency Sheikh Abdurrahman bin Muhammad bin Jabir Al Thani, the managing director of Doha Bank, should receive it. He obliged. He, he came all the way a couple of days before from New York. And uh, I have great privilege, ladies and gentlemen, inviting him to the dais on behalf of all of you. And I want him to release the book before he gives the chief guest address. I, he will release the book to His Excellency Sheikh Abdurrahman as well. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in giving a great welcome reception to His Excellency Mr. Nasser Abdulaziz Al Nasser. Ladies and gentlemen.